let's talk about what the buzz around artificial intelligence is. We hear many presidents of countries, many entrepreneurs, many leaders from around the world talking about how artificial intelligence is the most revolutionary technology in the world today. We hear uh, presidents like uh, President Putin of Russia saying that the country that's going to lead artificial intelligence is going to lead the world. And we know that there are countries that advocate for artificial intelligence and have national strategies. But before looking at that, we need to understand why governments are not doing enough to lead the artificial intelligence momentum moving forward. If this is a technology that's going to impact every facet of life, and we know that it will, if it's a technology that's going to create economic return, that's going to create an advantage for countries, why aren't governments doing enough to ensure that they are leading this revolution moving forward? In the UAE, we believe that we should not be reactive, we need to be proactive. And the same way that we created industries in the UAE that did not exist before, whether it's tourism, whether it's logistics, whether it's becoming a financial hub, we know that we can become a hub for artificial intelligence and we have the opportunities necessary to become leaders in that sector. So the AI strategy was trying to create, or, or the notion behind it is trying to create a momentum that starts from the UAE and ripples off to the world. Leveraging on our, uh, let's say, advantages of being a country that has 200 nationalities, so we have an amazing set of data that can be used to create global artificial intelligence algorithms. And then finally, uh, ensuring that our people are not left behind. We don't want to be importers of technology. We want to be the creators of technology. We want to deploy the technology in a way that serves everyone, whether it's people in this room or people in the country. And we also want to ensure that everyone plays a role in shaping that future together. That's fantastic and very inspiring. Thank you very much for sharing this. And I have a follow-up question to you. As a matter of fact, why has the UAE launched an expanded national strategy covering different sectors, unlike some other countries that have launched more specialized strategies in a specific sector? Can you tell us about that? So if you look at artificial intelligence as a technology, it's a uh, technology that's going to touch every single sector. So there is no sector that will remain untouched by artificial intelligence. So looking at specific sectors is great, but understanding the impact across all sectors is even more important. Some implementations of artificial intelligence might impact certain sectors negatively. So what we are looking at as the UAE is two facets. First, how artificial intelligence is going to benefit the sectors that we want to benefit. And second, how artificial intelligence is going to create challenges for us and how we can overcome these challenges with proactive regulation proactive policies and also ensuring that we have people who understand that these are the challenges and overcome them. So don't look at artificial intelligence as just something that will impact, let's say, healthcare. It's going to impact healthcare, education, transport, security, you name it. Any sector is going to be impacted by AI positively and negatively and we need to be proactive in dealing with that. Very comprehensive strategy. Thank you very much. Now let's explore Armenia. I'm sure not many people here know that in addition to math and science, children in Armenia also learn chess. Yes, this teaches them how to focus, compete, and develop their cognitive skills. Your Highness, tell us, the love for chess behind your strategy to lead the future of artificial intelligence, is there a correlation there? Thank you. <clears throat> First of all, I'd like to thank uh, Your Highness uh, for uh, uh, this great event and the uh, organizers, because everything looks great, the exhibition, the floor, and uh, all the organization is in a perfect level. Uh, coming to the question, uh, that's a great question. Actually, I would like to mention that uh, the last two Olympic Games of chess, the Armenian Armenian team won the Olympic, Olympic chess. So the last 10 years, the Olympic chess champion team was Armenians. And we're just, uh, just this small country. But what is unique about chess? Because when you play chess, you really need to concentrate, create a strategy, predict the game. And then based on your leveraging the data that you have learned and the intelligence that you have, you should win or lose the game. And that's, I think, uh, of course, chess uh, was str and, and strong enough not to the artificial intelligence much. However, what we can learn now, 
that using the big data being created during this whole history of time, it is now e easier for the people to learn uh, the games like chess and then to, uh, to really find the patterns based on, on the big data, find the patterns and, and uh, learn much more in an effective way and faster than, than it was before. All the uh, uh, school, let me use this one. Yeah, all the Armenian schools are equipped with the chess um, uh, rooms and it is included into the, and it is, the, I think uh, there is no other country that has it. That's and we explore that uh, it's, it's really a great way to That's teach. Fantastic. And I know you have prepared a video for us to share a little bit more of the story of Armenia and how you are becoming a nation that is ready for those challenges. Would you like to play that video now? Yeah, it would be great. If you want to play. Armenia, the Silicon Valley of the former USSR, a country where high technologies have always evolved to keep up with the times. How did this all start? The National Academy of Sciences, established in 1943, this institution carries out and supervises fundamental and applied research in different disciplines, uniting around 40 research institutions. The Computer Research and Development Institute. This institution used to be the biggest center for development of computer equipment and automatic control systems, one of the first computers in the world, and the very first one in the USSR, Nairi 2, was produced right here. The Institute of Physics, it's here that international level theoretical and experimental research on elementary particles and nuclear physics are conducted. The Polytechnic University, this huge center of technical sciences, is one of the leading institutions of high technologies in the region. It is a recognized and distinguished university, not only in Armenia, but also beyond its borders. Who are the initiators of high technologies? We found a solution to a 70-year-old fundamental problem in mathematical theory. We were one of the pioneers who created the remote control helicopter. We are among the founders of theoretical astrophysics. We are now moving ahead towards ambitious plans and perspectives of the future. Over the last seven years, the revenue of Armenian technological companies has grown by five times, with an annual average rate of about 25%. The role of the Armenian government in the growth of this industry is crucial. Research and development centers of various multinational high-tech companies are located in Armenia. Synopsis, the Armenian branch of the company designed the USB-3. National Instruments is ranked among the 100 best employers in the world, and one of their trending engineering centers is located in Armenia. Armenian Engineering Labs, known as ONEL, started to function with the support of this organization. Cisco Armenia, using advanced technologies, the Armenian branch of this company designs and develops Cisco's leading network chips. Many Armenian high-tech companies are now acknowledged internationally. Pixar, more than 100 million people all over the world edit almost 850 million pics during a month in this application. Pixar, the biggest photo editing app in the whole world. SoloLearn is the biggest mobile platform for teaching programming, which is among the fastest developing companies in the world. Ya yeah Engineering is a company that provides a full range of engineering services from design to manufacturing of devices, systems, and automated test equipment for advanced industrial applications. The list of these companies can be continued with many other Armenian startups, which are conquering the world market and are also leading with the rate of female employment in the sector. In 2019, Armenia will host a number of international and local conferences. Come to Armenia, the land of revolutionary opportunities. That's great. Congratulations for such great development, development in our country. Yes, thank you very much. I want you to share with us what are the challenges you face in your ministry to get that level of achievements and how you are preparing for the future and fighting those challenges for the future? Um, uh, I think the, the main challenge in the, in the government system is uh, to really train the people who used to use that or uh, other type of a tool to really start using technology. Uh, and understanding what's the future and how how it, how bright is it and how to use the modern ways of technology. Whenever you try to implement this or that kind of an automated system or a, a new kind of a paper uh, 
non-paper technology, automated uh, technologies. It's a matter of uh, teaching people how, how good is it and how productive is it. And uh, that takes time. I think that's challenging. Uh, but I, uh, on the other hand, when, when they really realize that it helps, it makes it uh, easier to, to really come up with another one. I think we are uh, living in the, in the age of a kind of a revolution in, in governance and in really in other fields of the uh, economy, like, the, uh, like His Excellency just mentioned, the technology will touch the whole sectors of the economy. And, and that's the future. Perfect. Well, speaking of revolution and doing things that never existed before, Your Excellency, I had the privilege of hosting the AI camp. And I could see by myself how committed you are here in the country of developing those skills from very young age. And I have to tell you, everybody, sometimes the CEOs that I talk to, they don't come up with questions that the youth is asking. They are very much ready in this country. So I'd like you to tell us more specific about sports, Your Excellency. How do you see artificial intelligence changing the sports sector and how soon that change will happen, in your opinion? Thank you for that question. That's very relevant probably to the crowd. I think that artificial intelligence will not impact the uh, sports sector soon. It has already impacted the sports sector. Wow. And the survival of anyone working in the sector depends on using artificial intelligence. And let me give you a few examples. Anything that can be quantified can be predicted using artificial intelligence and data analytics. The amount of data that is generated from every single athlete, from every single move, is incredible. And using artificial intelligence to improve the performance of the athlete, to ensure that you're able to get more bang for your buck when you invest, is why this technology exists. So for you to survive in this era, you need to use artificial intelligence. I think artificial intelligence will have four key impacts on uh, the sector. The first is if we're, go if we're going to look at scouting and recruiting. Even as early as 2003, there's a very famous movie, I don't know if you've seen it, it's called Moneyball. Yes. Where um, the Auckland Athletics team used artificial intelligence to scout the best players, even though they were seen as bad players by normal scouts. So people who were seen as experts in the field saw these individuals as the worst individuals, right? But the artificial intelligence algorithms saw them as pro athletes. So the team with minimal investment, it wasn't the best team, uh, you know, in the Major League Baseball at the time. It was not run by the most professional uh, coach. The coach was, was okay. Um, use artificial intelligence to become a cutting edge team that really became one of the best teams uh, in the country back then. So artificial intelligence is going to be used very much so in scouting and recruitment. It's also going to be used in training and development of the players. You can wear any wearable today and understand your heart rate. You can understand so many details about your body that we could never do in the past. And that is very important. Another thing that costs a lot in the uh, sports sector or industry is people getting actually uh, hurt or getting uh, you, you know, certain diseases or getting certain injuries that lead to them actually not being able to continue their training and operate in the most optimal manner. I think artificial intelligence is going to play a big role in reducing injuries and in reducing uh, a wait time that uh, that athletes have outside the, the field. And then finally, I think there's going to be a big role for artificial intelligence in distribution and advertising. You can advertise for the right crowds, you can distribute the content of your games in the most effective manner. So you're able to generate a lot more money from the people that are watching your sports. So I think that AI is going to play a big role across the spectrum <coughs> of sports and we need to really incubate it from today. That's very exciting. If you are from sports out there, I think you got the message, right? It is for you to take advantage of the technology, not for the sake of the technology, but to improve your own game. Now, for closing remarks, I have a question for each one of you. So, for you, Your Excellency, uh, what is the best experience you have in your country that can be used in a sports sector? We, we talked about chess. Uh, basically, to really understand the whole patterns. So uh, I would like to also talk about the industry itself. Every industry, especially sports, uh, what takes uh, much of a time when you start to analyze the pattern, 
Uh, so what, it, what was the situation, how it changed, and how it impact in the future of the game? I mean, if you have lots of patterns from all of the world, and the, all the data accumulating in one, one piece uh, of the uh, memory, you just run an uh, intelligent algorithm to understand what are the patterns and predict uh, precisely what should be the game to really win, or what should be the training to win. Uh, from, from our side, I can say that there are many kind of an applications where the artificial intelligence was, uh, was applied in Armenia, starting from sports to chess to medicine to uh, predicting this or that kind of diseases. And uh, there is some uh, other video material, if we would have time to play it, a five minute video, I would show in that manner how, how the startups really impact on the economy of the country and also the economy of the world. I think the, the future is bright and I think uh, we should really use the technologies in the, in, especially in the parts where you don't really need kind of a creativity. We should keep our creativity and our time to really sit on the beach, uh, enjoy the weather and start to create an art and the music and the algorithms and all the technology and give the, the ones that should be analyzed and the, the work that is really artificial to the technology and that would really change the world. Thank that, you. That's my belief. Thank you very much. This is really great. And for you, Your Excellency, uh, we are all great admirers of this country because we are trying to show the world how to be in the forefront of innovation. So what advice do you think is appropriate for countries that have not yet developed a roadmap for artificial intelligence? Well, uh, it's you know, quite obvious. Develop a roadmap for artificial intelligence. <laughs> so start. that's the first thing. You need to start. The second is, I think that there is a big appetite that individuals have to actually use cutting edge technology, even more so than governments in most cases. So let's do a quick survey here of the crowd. Um, I'd like to see how many people here have tried using wearables in the past. Have you had an uh, Apple Watch or you know, a smartwatch or a smartphone or you know, Move or something like that? So th there is a big number of people here that use wearables, right? You're not forced to do that by government, but you want to understand yourselves better. What I think governments should do and, and what we need to do before looking at the strategy is look at how many people understand what these technologies are, do a survey to try to understand how much awareness you need to build, and then I think educate your government officials first and foremost because the biggest challenge that artificial intelligence is going to create in the short term is a challenge of ignorance within decision makers. So if the people who are taking the decisions, the government officials who are calling the shots, do not understand what this technology is, that is a big challenge that is going to impact people's lives negatively. And then actually try to educate the individuals themselves to become people who are adopting technology, people who understand what are the impacts of technology, and people who work with these technologies. That's my advice. Well, ladies and gentlemen, you heard the message here. Artificial intelligence is not one of those fancy things that happens here and there. It's just like electricity. It's going to be all over the place. It will power economies. And if you are at a country, you need to use artificial intelligence. If you are a club, you need to use artificial intelligence. If you are an athlete, you need to use artificial intelligence. All those stakeholders can benefit from the technology to improve their own game, regardless what the game is. So the time is right here and right now. And with that, I want you to put your hands together for those amazing ministers that are also innovators taking the future forward. Thank you very much.